before we start. Dear Lord, I'm thankful for this day. I'm thankful for the reminder to give thanks. To give thanks to you in all things. All things are from you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the scriptures, the truth that is in them. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us through them. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be accepted in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today on Thanksgiving, most often we focus on the thankful part of it. And we have so many things that we can be thankful for. But today I want to focus more on the giving part of it. And when we give out of thanksgiving to the Lord, that becomes our worship to the Lord. When we give out of our thanksgiving, we give with cheerful hearts. And the Lord is pleased by that. I want to share a story with you. In 2009, uh, a young man is returning from UH from Hawaii to San Francisco after Christmas break or before Christmas break. Well, his flight was delayed, and after midnight, he finally got in. His brother was there to pick him up at SFO. They're heading north. And another young man, going over 100 miles an hour, is flying behind them, clips their car. He dies on impact. The two brothers in the car are in coma with severe head injuries. The next morning, I got a call from one of the pastors at Tiburon Baptist Church, letting me know what had happened. His brothers and their parents were members at Tiburon Baptist Church. And so over the next couple of months, we gathered together at the hospital, we prayed, and through medical and divine intervention, these boys were caught. They graduated from college, they are moving on to their, their careers, and they're doing well. Well, a few months after this incident, Emily and I were planning to move back to Hawaii. And so I had a Honda Accord that I was going to sell, because we had two cars, and I was going to sell my Honda to help fund our moving expenses. And then we got a message from the parents of these two boys. And they said, oh, we're looking for a car. Does anybody know of anybody that has a second hand car? Well, this Honda Accord was given to me when I was working at a Chinese church in the, in the city. Um, one of the members gave me a car because my car broke down. And so while we really needed the money to move, I just really felt the Lord saying, give them this car, because I gave it to you. <laughs> so I told them, I think we're supposed to give this car to the Kellys. And so we did. We said, hey, we want to give you our car. We're moving back to Hawaii. We're going to take one with us. We want to give you our car for your son. Well, little did we know they were not in any kind of financial mind. They were they're very well off financially. So instead of giving them a free car, what happened was they actually paid us for the car, plus they gave us money to help us move. So it covered all of our moving expenses and then some. And this family, we continue to be friends with them. They continue to support us in our ministry and our lives really faithful brothers and sisters of Christ. But it's, I'm telling you this story because I want to show you the kindness and the faithfulness of the Lord, of how He plants seeds, and then you plant those seeds, and you just see the harvest of the Lord exponentially grow when He gives and you give out of thanksgiving. When you read that verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. For God loves a cheerful giver. Deuteronomy 15.10 says, you shall generously give to him, and your heart shall not be grieved when you give him, give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all your undertakings. 
God loves a cheerful giver, but here's what I want to point out to you. Understand that it is not the cheerful giving that merits the Lord's blessings. It is not the cheerful giving that merits the Lord's blessings. Do you not believe that the Lord has laid out all of the visions for you from the beginning of time? Do you not believe that He foreknew everything that you would need? When we give cheerfully, what we're doing is we're following in the path of the Lord, in the provisions that He had laid out for us from the beginning of time. So it is not our cheerful giving that merits the blessing of the Lord, but our cheerful giving becomes our worship to the Lord. Comes our worship to the Lord. And I say these things that it is not our cheerful giving that receives the blessings. It was laid out from the beginning, because I look here in verse 10. Now he who supplies, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase your harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in everything from all the morality which through us is produced in thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but also overflowing through many thanksgivings to God. So he already supplied the seeds. You know, when I look back at that story I shared, were we blessed because I'm such a saint and a generous guy that I gave up my car? No. No. We were blessed because we were following the Lord's command. Here's what I gave you. Now give to someone else. In now plant these seeds out of the harvest that I have brought up in your life. It's nothing that I did. It's none of my actions that warranted the Lord's blessings, but what He has done from the beginning of time. The seeds are provided by the Lord. And then we see here that the service, when we are able to do that, what is the overflow of it? It's our thanksgiving. So out of giving what the Lord has given to us, outflows the thanksgiving to the Lord. I think about this verse here, about the talents in Matthew. The parable of the talents. And you all know this story. There are three servants given talents, and the master left, and he came back. And this is what he says in verse 21 to one of his servants. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Enter into the joy of your master. Now, when we read this, we can easily misinterpret this and say, Well, look, see, this guy invested in the Lord's things, and the, and the master gave him so many you know, treasures, increased his treasures. But when you read it, it says, I will set you over much. All of these things still belong to the master. None of these things belong to us. And so we understand that all things are from the Lord. All good gifts are from the Lord. But when we're faithful to Him, He sets us over much more to steward His resources. And then you look at the lazy state. He buried the talent. He didn't sow the seeds. And what happened to him, we see, he was thrown out of the gates. Right? Was that injustice? No. Why? Because scattering the seeds that the Lord has provided for us is our command as Christians. This is our command as Christians. So look at verse 13. Because of the proof given by this ministry, they will glorify God for your obedience to your confession of the gospel of Christ and for the liberality of your contributions to them and to all, while they also, by prayer on your behalf, yearn for you because of the surpassing grace of God. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. If you have confessed Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, if you profess to be a Christian, 
the ministry of giving freely and sowing the seeds that God has provided is our command, is a commandment from God. When we give out of thankfulness for what the Lord has done, it becomes not only our worship, but other believers are brought into worship as well. If we have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, that profession of faith should lead us in this ministry of giving and sowing seeds. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that God calls us all things to work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. In verse 15, if you go back, it says, uh, Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. In verse 15, the scripture mentions this indescribable gift, and he is talking about the surpassing grace of God in you. And that grace is Jesus Christ. The grace of God is Jesus born into this world to die for our sins and to be raised again for our sanctification unto the Lord. Let's go back to verses 8 and 9. And it says, And God is able to make all grace abound in you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. As it is written, he scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Brothers and sisters, it's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. This is the gift of grace. This is the gift that all things flow from. It is in Jesus' name that our thanksgiving should be lifted to the heavens. It is the grace of God through Jesus Christ that is the seed in which we sow. Jesus is given, uh, given for the spiritually poor, the spiritually dead. And that includes every one of us here. When we give out of thank thankful hearts, we bring other believers to worship to worship with us and bring glory to God. And we also share the good news of Jesus Christ with those who do not know Him. So brothers and sisters, on this Thanksgiving day, there is so much to be thankful for. And in all things, thank God, as He alone is the giver. <clears throat> he is the he, excuse me, He alone is the giver of all of these blessings. The seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ is planted in our hearts. By our obedience, it grows with the working of the Holy Spirit. We then sow the seeds that the Lord multiplies by His command. When we can see all things as from the Lord, we become cheerful givers, and our hearts of thanksgiving becomes more than a self-centered expression of gratitude, but it is now our worship to the Lord. For from Him, and through Him, and to Him are all things. To Him be the glory forever.